Hello, I'm Robin Merowitz. And I'm Allison Buchanan. We work together on a project this summer, Discarded Seafloor Objects. The goals of our project were essentially to be able to build a model that can predict movement with high confidence of discarded seafloor objects. Uh, we picked a bounding box region of the Carolinas to look at a large variety of different objects on the seafloor. This is a really important project and really interesting research because this can help us track where toxic waste might be released or where there is issues for navigational safety. As I said earlier, we chose the area of the Carolinas and looked at a wide range of data, which Robin will go into next. Yeah, so the first thing we started off with was the AWOIS RECs and uh, electronical nautical charts, which we've talked about before. And this is shown just the dots there are Rex and um, ANC data. And then the next was artificial reefs and oyster sanctuaries, which are, we combined those two data sets to create this folia map. As you can see, there's a lot of information and we did clip it to the North and South Carolina region. Um, next, we looked at bathymetry and wave, which is the study of the measurements of the depth of the water on the ocean floor, as you can see on this heat map of um, North and South Carolina, which we got this um, elsewhere, we did not generate that. Um, then here we have the bathymetry data, we brought it in from TIFFs, and we were able to combine the two different um, ones that we got into a data frame, and then we clipped it to our study area shown here. And then um, we dropped columns that were unneeded, which is shown here. Next, we looked at marine mishaps. We ended up not being able to use this data set because if you can see here, the X and Y are not Latin law in their point data, and we did not have enough time to get that to conform with our other data sets. Next, we look at nightlights fishing data. Nightlights is data that's being tracked by scientists in various marine fields around the world because it helps us track where shipping vessels are and it helps us see when things go dark. And a lot of times when things go dark is when they're dropping um, waste illegally. And we had like a bunch of TIFFs for that. We had 12 different TIFFs and we were able to do the same thing here where we brought them into a data frame and clipped it um, to our region. And this, when we clipped it to North South Carolina, it went from millions of lines to just 43 lines um, shown here. Um, we also created a folio map of the nightlights data, as you can see here, um, lots of information there. And then Allison will go into currents and waves, but we were able to combine the bathymetry data and the nightlights data to be our training data set shown here with clip to our, our region. So Allison will go into our prediction data now. Yeah, our prediction data frame was made um, with a variety of data from INSTAR, which uh, supplies data for this kind of work. They supply currents and waves data, and then also a DBC bed data, which is a variety of different data, raster data, point data, all kinds of different things that help to kind of infer what's going on uh, underneath on the seafloor on the terrain. Um, we have a merged data set here. So we were able to successfully put them together and then also clip them to our region. So we ended up with two clipped data frames, one for training, which would train our model, and then our prediction data set, which would be kind of looked at by our trained model for the machine learning. We were going to use our nearest neighbor from the scikit-learn for our, um, for our, our, algori oh, our algorithm for machine learning, excuse me. But unfortunately, we have run into some trouble and haven't quite gotten there with so because of so much work that we had for our data sets. And Robin can go into that a little bit more. Yeah, if we had more time, we ideally would get the model working. We got very close with these clip data sets. But um, as we discussed previously, even like we had KML, we had TIFFs, we had just so many different data sources. And we a lot of lessons learned. It was very, very difficult to combine all these data sources into a set that would work for a nearest neighbor. Um, we learned that there are very specific things that you need when working with machine learning. And we do wanna thank Chris Jenkins, who is our sponsor from Instar for the help that he provided. Um, but we definitely worked with like nearly 20 data sets and we're not able to familiarize ourselves enough with them to use judgment of what to pick to put in and not. So. We learned so much and we, if we had more time, we would hopefully get that model working. Um, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much. Thank you.